Hello everyone, welcome to 10QV, I'm Don Wiley. What is 10QV? 10 questions about the villages. Each episode, I'll meet with prominent and knowledgeable people here in the villages and the surrounding community, and I'll ask them 10 questions, and I'll get straight and factual answers to issues of importance here in the villages, and we'll try and disprove a few myths, misinformation, and urban legends about the villages. I hope you enjoy the show. Let's get started with this episode. Hello everyone. Welcome to 10QV. I'm Don Wiley. Today we have John Rohan, the Director of Parks and Recreation for the Villages, as our guest. Good morning, John. How are you? Good morning, Don, or should I say Mr. Wiley? Oh, uh, no, no. Don, please. We'll be on first name basis. All right, John. <laughs> um, so we're here at the Rohan Rec Center. My first question is, there's only two rec centers that are named after people. One's a president, and the other one's you. How'd that happen? Well, actually, uh, there is another one, uh, Moyer. Uh, yeah, but that's, a, that's, that's <laughs> not a regional rec center. That's just a, a, that's a village true. rec that's center. That's true. Um, so, um, and Azel will be named after. That's um, true. So, but it's not often you have rec centers named after individuals. And uh, to have uh, one named after my last name, our family's last name, Rohan, uh, it's what a, it's a, an honor. I uh, feel privileged, uh, blessed. All those wonderful words uh, that um, the family name will uh, live on in uh, perpetuity, and for um, our family to have and enjoy, as well as uh, our children and hopefully grandchildren someday. But the rest of the Rohan clan that's out and about are in the uh, in the area, um, we all share in that, and, and totally grateful for the the opportunity for that to happen and uh, every day I drive by here it's just uh, inspiring for me to be part of it. So I know you've been with the Villages Recreation Department for a long time. Uh, tell us a little bit how you got started and, and how you ended up where you are. It's, it's uh, been 28 years. Last week was t 28 years um, being part of this amazing community and uh, amazing family here of, of recreation professionals and working with the districts and, and the Morris family. Um, I graduated from the University of Florida with a degree in recreation, parks, and tourism, and uh, got my master's degree in, in uh, public administration. And uh, I was hired right out of the University of Florida uh, back in 93, I believe, and uh, I never left. I fell in love with this place, drove back and forth from the villages to Gainesville for about six and a half years. And uh, as the community continued to grow, I, I embraced the core values and the vision and and what was being created and the philosophy behind the, the influence uh, recreation and parks can have on benefiting people's lives here. So um, I was all in and still all in and what it does and offers to our 140,000 give or take residents today when it was 9,000 uh, residents uh, when I first started. So obviously the recreation department is probably the most visible portion of the villages on a day-to-day -day basis for the residents. I mean, we know it encompasses rec centers and swimming pools. Uh, what else falls under your guys? That's a really good question. You know, recreation and parks is, is a rather uh, a dynamic, uh, interactive uh, organization. You know, the numerous recreation centers, I think we mentioned 217 bocce courts at a meeting mm -hmm. last week. And, and certainly it's hard to keep up with all the great numbers, but it's always about people. But in addition to the recreation and parks areas uh, under our purview in our department, uh, we manage T, which is the Enrichment Academy. We have the outdoor excursions, which is the uh, boats and uh, kayaking, the Lake Sumter Line boats and uh, nature tours uh, that we do on Lake Sumter Landing. Uh, we also have the fitness clubs um, that are located inside the regional recreation centers. And of course, uh, you know, the lifestyle events and programming that goes on with camp villages and senior games. Uh, so yeah, it's very dynamic, uh, very people oriented, service driven. And um, so it's uh, not, not, your, not your traditional recreation parks organization by any shape and imagination. With that much going on, I mean, how big is, how big is your staff, both, I guess, full and part time? You know, we, uh, we're right around 600, give or take, on any given day, employees, uh, probably uh, 
close to uh, maybe a little bit under 100 that are full-time. Um, we have uh, degreed professionals um, that we go out and we try to recruit. We try to retain and recruit the best possible uh, professionals to be part of the team in the organization because we know that they are going to be um, committed and dedicated to the, the philosophy of recreation parks. And so m the vast majority, either part-time or even full-time, have some uh, degree uh, background. Uh, many of our you know, leadership team members have masters uh, in a related field. So our residents are, you know, it's kind of like uh, NFL, you got the best of the best working here. Uh, the top picks is what we try to go out there and recruit. And uh, I think our residents see, the, see that professionalism when they're out there engaging with our staff at the recreation centers and the managers and the supervisors uh, and our dynamic administrative team and working along with Richard Baer and, and uh, the other department directors. It's truly a very top-notch professional organization that we're all proud to be part of. With so many rec centers, uh, where are you finding your staff? I mean, right now in the news, we hear about people not being able to find people to come work for them. Are you having that same problem or? You know, that's a really another, you've got some great questions. And, um, you know, like the rest of the country and area, we're, we're running into some areas of opportunity for our uh, recruiting of uh, team members. Um, we are coming up with some creative ways to manage our existing team and staff with uh, the scheduling. Um, but things are starting to get better and, and the momentum is picking up and we're moving in that direction. We're receiving more applications, more interviews are being set up. So I think as, a, as COVID slowly gets in the rear view mirror, um, people are coming back to the workforce. So I think it's temporary and uh, we are, we've made the necessary adjustments to continue to provide uh, our services and, and our facility operations. So John, you mentioned that uh, some of the recreation centers have uh, fitness centers in them. Uh, those fitness centers, there's an additional fee to use them. How does that work into the recreation department budget? Is it separate? Is it together? That's a good question. The fitness clubs were established uh, when we opened up Mulberry Grove. Uh, residents had requested um, some type of wellness workout place. Um, as we know, that wasn't part of the original uh, amenity uh, package. So the idea behind that was to create a membership-based uh, service through the fitness clubs. We actually have rebranded, it's called Fit Club, and um, it's membership-based, so it means it's an enterprise fund. It means all the funding that goes into those Fit Club staff and uh, pay for the personnel, staffing, and operations, equipment, and overhead of those Fit Club uh, locations. So they're, they're self-sufficient, they're not uh, amenity supported. Um, they are supported by the, the revenues that brought in from, from membership dues. So um, it's worked out very well. Um, our residents like having that additional opportunity to use some of the designated regional rec centers uh, to come in and get, get a workout and they pay, they can get a daily up to a year type membership available to them. So that's inside the rec centers. Now at places like Lake Miona, here at Rohan, uh, Everglades, there's outside fitness equipment. Mm -hmm. uh, is that part of that or is that f free for use by all the residents? That outdoor exercise equipment that we strategically have uh, placed and installed uh, around the designated recreation centers uh, is part of the overall amenity service package that is uh, available for our residents to use no different than the bocce course, the shuffleboard course, the pickleball course, um, all those additional uh, amenities that people have access to outside that is uh, available for them to use as well. That's and excellent. it's very popular, by the way, and uh, very happy of the use uh, and the fact that because of the popularity, we continue to uh, expand and, and add more locations of those uh, centers with the equipment. You're adding more locations. So what, what, what's getting it next? Well, we don't want to let that oh. out right now because <laughs> we want people to go to our district gov uh, website. You yeah. want them to sign up for e-notifications, and we have the district weekly newsletter that comes out, and, of course, the website and also will be in the Villages Recreation and Parks publication. So I could tell you, but um, then, you know. Then you'd have you'll, to you'll kill be in the me. Know. Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> Thanks, John. All right. You also mentioned the Enrichment Academy. Now, I, I teach a couple of classes at the Enrichment Academy. Uh, how is, I mean, I, how did it come about? Well, the Enrichment Academy, uh, we affectionately call it T, 
Um, once again, our residents are always trying to better their lives, enrich their lives, not only on the spiritual sense and the physical sense and the recreation, but also from the educational sense, to, to learn how to fly a drone, uh, to take a dance class, to learn a language. And so, um, because we have so many talented residents in the community who were prior instructors or have a skill set in that respective um, program, uh, we created the Enrichment Academy, which is a fee-based program where residents can sign up for an activity or class or program for a specific amount of day and time for a designated fee. And the fees go to pay uh, the instructor and cover our administrative costs and operations. So really, um, T was created as a result of resident suggestions and input, which I think is one thing that is very exciting in 28 years uh, being part of this amazing community. There's no limit. You know, it's always about creating, it's all about developing, it's all about planning. And to see the fruits of that vision come in, uh, into play with the number of registrations, the number of people who are learning to fly a drone <laughs> safely in our community. Yeah. Um, you know, those are things that our residents have uh, come to recreation and parks to ask for us to help fulfill their dreams and make that come to reality. So it's exciting to be part of the Enrichment Academy as another facilitator uh, to help residents get the most out of their lives. Well, it definitely is a, a multifaceted organization you're running. You know, we know that there are rec centers, obviously, throughout the community. Uh, some of them are owned by the Sumter Landing Community Development District. Some are owned by Village Center Community Development District. But the one south of State Road 44, mm -hmm. just basically south of where we're sitting today, yeah. um, they're owned by the developer. Is the developer running them separately, or is that part of your organization? The, the, the Recreation and Park Services, the staffing and operations at um, the developer-owned facilities are through a management agreement for services. So essentially, the district's team members, uh, Recreation and Parks, as, as it relates to the recreation centers, uh, will operate uh, those developer-owned uh, facilities and amenities. In return, we get reimbursed for those services of personnel and overhead. Uh, so um, it's been the theme from when Village Center was first started that um, as the facilities are created, staff will operate, and as we always have said, that somewhere down the road, there'll be a transition where the ownership of those amenities and facilities will fall under one of the districts to own in perpetuity and operate. So basically, they own them, they get the amenity fee, we op you operate them, and we, the district gets reimbursed for those costs. That's right. When you say we, we mean the district. The, yes. go the government is the, the, um, the, the, the management company in the agreement with the developer yeah. to provide those services, that the government is providing those support services to operate those amenities. Yes, our, our government structure here in the villages yes. is uh, complicated, I guess would be an easy way to put it. Yeah, it has an opportunity there, but I think, you know, uh, the leadership of Richard and Carrie and, and Kenny and the other department directors, you know, we work very uh, closely with the, our elected officials and our district board members and a tremendous uh, platform of marketing on our website. And uh, we have the Resident Academy, we have, you know, CDD orientation, they have participation in the board meetings, they can become a board member such as you as a resident. Yeah. So it's a very transparent uh, operation in, in providing really public services. That's really what we're here to do, whether it's recreation or property management, is to serve the residents of the community. But you're right, there are opportunities to learn but the opportunities are available, but we, you and I talk all the time. People yeah. need to take that step forward and, and become educated and, and aware and get that information. So, John, the Recreation Department website lists a CAPRA certification mm -hmm. by uh, the Recreation Department. What exactly does that mean, and what does that, that mean for us as residents? CAPRA is the uh, accreditation program for the uh, NRPA, which is the National Recreation and Parks Association. It's the national governing body for our professional organization. And CAPRA stands for the Commission uh, of Accreditation for Parks and Recreation Agencies. Uh, we undertook this uh, big, hairy, audacious goal that we called uh, over 10 years ago. We're actually entering, getting ready to enter our uh, next five-year renewal, which will make us a nationally accredited parks and recreation agency uh, for 15 years. And so what does that mean to the community for people who are familiar with accreditation? Um, there are standards and best practices, industry standards and best practices that have to be, you know, 
test it against uh, you know daily application and operation. So what that does is it gives us there's 155 plus or minus standards to put that. So it covers everything from HR to programming, uh, budgeting, uh, all different types of services that we offer in recreation and parks. And so we have our standards and best practice, and they get um, gauged against the industry standards on those best practices. Very proud that the last time we went through that accreditation, there was 155 standards. We received a perfect score. We had all 155 standards approved by the accreditation agency who actually they come in and visit and do site visit and, and interact with our team and staff. Uh, a little bit of stress going through the process if anyone's ever gone through an accreditation, but we think we have a great organization. We wanted to test test it against the, the, the greatest industry standards out there with the NRPA. We also belong to the FRPA, which is the Florida Recreation and Parks Association. So we are part of an elite group of agencies in the entire country um, that are nationally accredited. So what does that mean for our residents? It means sustainability. It means always looking for better ways to run our operations. It means short and long-term goal planning. It means about setting up a mission, vision, and purpose on what we're supposed to do. So the organization doesn't run with an individual. It runs with a set of standards. So um, it allows that growth for today, tomorrow, and the future. But at the same time, we're never content where we are today. We're looking at how we can get better tomorrow. So um, we're really excited about the next five years ahead of us. We're, we COVID set back the timing of the next uh, accreditation process, but it should be in the next year or so. Um, we're already going through all that heavy lifting right now, getting those standards in place. They get reviewed and they will come back to us and say, you're doing things here need to be switched up and, and modified here. Um, but we have a very dedicated, as we mentioned earlier in the show, professional dedicated group of recreation professionals who are, are supporting and behind this. So our residents in turn are the beneficiaries of this accreditation process. It's not just a seal, the seal's nice, we have it on our vehicles, we have it on our printed material. But that, what that really means is that um, this community, the residents who live here, um, have an organization that is the best of the best. With all this activity, is that going to impact uh, what the residents see and receive as services when using our recreation facilities? What they're going to see is more, more creativity and innovation. You know, that's one of our core values besides hard work and, and hospitality and stewardship. You know, um, we have, I think, um, maybe I'm being biased. We have some of the most amazing recreation centers and golf courses anywhere in the world. Uh, but those are wonderful, designed beautifully and themed. But really what happens to bring them to life is the, the people helping organize them, the volunteers that are leading the activities and programs, um, the support we get from administration to be able to do that, the funding, you know, the budgetary funding to be able to provide these services, equipment and supplies for, you know, the 3,000 plus clubs to have the resources necessary to do that. So what I think residents are going to continue to experience is great, still great uh, programming, but we're always looking for new and better ways uh, to provide those services and so that will continue to be part of our mission is how do we do things better more efficiently and to provide more opportunities so John you had mentioned COVID just a minute ago uh, obviously during the whole COVID crisis last year uh, many of the rec centers were, were shut down uh, facilities weren't being used um, it sounds like we had a, a good savings in cost and uh, your staff got some needed time off you know, COVID, uh, when it came out, um, a lot of people didn't know what to do. And, and so um, we had to take the necessary measures for the safety and well-being of our community and for our residents. Um, we did shut down our facilities for roughly about two weeks on around March 23rd. And you used the word substantial. We still had to have the, the HVAC system running. We still had to have the buildings cleaning. So. Well, whilst there was some staff that were off during that period of time, uh, we quickly resumed back to normal operations and facilities were open and we were staffed. So perception wise, you know, when people hear closures and uh, savings, you still have operational maintenance, uh, upkeep, uh, landscaping, uh, uh, those operational services because you, you got to keep the thing up and running because right. you don't want to have other issues because being closed down. So. Um, and it was very uh, rewarding when we uh, opened back up that the, our professional team was first in line to get back in here to, to get things up and running. Because we knew recreation was uh, a support mechanism for our residents who in some sense were fear. There was a lot of fear out there. And then they could come use the swimming pools and they could use the outdoor exercise equipment. Um, they could come in and 
and sit in the lobby and, and read a book and, and re get out of their homes to do that. So, um, you know, having recreation as a place for people to still stay active and healthy during the pandemic, I think we help people get through that uh, in a more positive light, having these wonderful recreation centers and, and amenities for their use. Even though there was social distancing and mask wearing and, and limited numbers, the ability that we still provided services and the fact that even our numbers were, were historically lower than other communities of the same age and magnitude shows the resiliency of our residents and the professionalism of the district to take the necessary measures to keep residents as safe as possible under our areas of responsibility, but also uh, to keep our team members safe as well. So, you know, we've weathered the storm amazingly well, even though we don't take for granted people were impacted in all s different ways, shapes and form. And now today we're talking about, you know, not wearing masks anymore, uh, you know, the number of people who have been vaccinated. So, you know, the light is, is there and now and it's brighter and, and we're getting ready to resume, you know, back to those uh, normal operations pre-COVID um, that have been long been waiting, but it doesn't happen without the patience and fortitude of our residents trusting us and believing in us and uh, supporting us. It was total collaboration and cooperation. So yeah, there might have been some, some minor cost savings, but um, overall the, the savings were, were worth it because of the end result we hear today and the, the, the negative impact was, was, was very limited. Yeah, it was a, a difficult time for sure. The, uh, I know that your staff was also involved with a lot of additional cleaning and sanitizing of the facilities on a regular basis. Uh, obviously that cost uh, the Recreation Department quite a bit of money. Uh, can you tell us just briefly what, what extra things were done during the, the time? Well, you know, um, our tremendous partners, the district property management team and, and CPM commercial property management oversees the, the developer uh, recreation centers. It was really in collaboration and coordination with them using um, the best cleaning supplies and materials and working with our, our con contractual janitorial companies. Uh, everybody stepped up their game even more so than they normally do during COVID. And then as far as recreation personnel and staff, you know, we created the sanitation stations at all the different rooms and locations inside and outside, uh, cleaning of the equipment on an ongoing basis, uh, but still being stewards of the equipment and supplies. Uh, and so I think uh, collectively it was a team effort. It was, and it was even our residents helping make sure they were taking their necessary precautions when they were coming in uh, to utilize the recreation center. So um, it was, it was, uh, a lot of people doing a lot of the right things to keep everybody safe. So John, one of the, the complaints I frequently hear is about unauthorized people at the swimming pools yeah. and the not enough ID checks being done. Uh, how do you respond to that? I mean, do we have a, pro a big problem with unauthorized people using our rec centers and our pools and our other facilities? You know, part of our responsibilities in recreation parks, uh, besides, like you said, doing a lot of everything, is to be stewards of the amenities facilities. And um, our staff has handheld scanners for scanning ID cards. We manually check ID cards. Our residents understand and appreciate that living here in the villages uh, comes with its privileges, uh, and that includes having a resident ID card and if you want your guests to come here to have your guest ID card. So um, while it may occur from time to time uh, that someone has forgotten their ID card or someone has tried to utilize the facilities, um, overall, um, statistically, um, we track ID checking, guest ID cards being issued. Um, and most of the time it's education. Most of the time a person is there has forgot to bring their guest ID card. And so it's more you need to bring it. So our residents have been a great partner with us to make sure when their guests are coming to use their amenities that they have their photo ID and their guest ID card with them. Um, but you know, from time to time it may occur and we address the situations when they do occur. But um, I think it's because the community support that everybody has to protect their amenities. They wanna make sure those who are using them are qualified to use them. And if they have any issues or questions, we simply ask them to call the center where they're that issue may be occurring and we will send our team out there to go look into it further and to see what is, is actually transpiring. So some of it is urban myth, as you can imagine, you know, social media captures a lot of that. Um, but if and when it does occur, uh, we have measures in place to uh, educate, address, and in, in, in the, if necessary, enforce. So that individual who may try to be using these amenities that doesn't qualify for them, um, 
we have the ability to, to address those situations. But uh, my 28 years here, um, overall compliance is in, in the upper probably 95, 98% of people using the facilities. Because I think they understand that expectation when they're living here that um, it's, it's everyone's responsibility to make sure to protect our amenities. So John, you don't feel that there's really a, a big issue with, with outside people from other communities using our, our facilities? We're, we're not seeing it on our, our uh, end of our checking and our observations and our monitoring and, and uh, supporting the being out at the swimming pools and checking ID cards. Um, so it, it hasn't risen to the level that we think we need to make any policy changes. John, one of the areas that uh, as, a, as a district supervisor and on Project White I hear a lot about is the recreation news. And it's taken a lot of heat over the last couple of years uh, because of the cost. And, and part of that is people didn't realize sure. that there was actually a cost to producing it and what it was and who was paying it. Um, it's obviously been changing in, in recent years, uh, but there's a, been a big outcry to move to a more technological platform, sure. uh, that newspapers are out of date. Uh, I was reading it this morning. I didn't think it was out of date but that's just my opinion. Sure. So where, where are we going with the recreation news? You know, the recreation, we, it's the Villages Recreation and Parks publication. It comes out every Thursday. It's a staple of our community, uh, and it is a great resource. So uh, I, I agree with you that um, it's part of our communication platform, and so as a result and, and input and direction from our stakeholders, residents and elected board members, uh, there is a digital format of the Recreation and Parks publication. It's on our website at districtgov.org. Um, we also still have the printed format. And I can ask two residents on any given day. One likes the digital format and loves one likes the printed format. And so, you know, as part of that presentation about the Recreation and Parks publication as part of the budget process, I think we came uh, with the analysis that our, our product that we use is far less expensive than other publications and other city and county agencies in the state of Florida. I think we're roughly around 30 cents uh, a copy per household. Um, so the cost is, is marginal, but the, the, what you get in return is um, information about recreation parks and centers and programming and clubs and activities, which to us is an invaluable measure to get people out of their homes and engaged in recreation and park services and programs and that this this publication which is in print in digital format we also have information that we share on WVLG uh, we use the village's daily sun uh, we have our website so there's numerous communication platforms for people uh, to stay connected as well as the village's app where they can find information out on the community calendar so I think what our, our big um, education process has been over the last year is find what works for you. If you like the printed format, you have it. Uh, if you like the digital format, you have it. If you like the app, you have it. You like going to our website. So um, we, we, we appreciate the fact that we live in a community where there are choices for people to decide what they want to do for finding out information about um, our, our recreation park services. So. Um, and as you've mentioned, it continues to be enhanced and improved upon. We're very proud of the publication. We work very closely with our marketing and design team and Pam Henry, who's been with us for 25 years. You know, it serves as a way for, you know, how do we start the drone club? If you remember, we had to provide your survey in the Recreation Parks publication so people could know, I didn't know there was a drone club trying to get started. I'd like to get involved with that drone club. So it is a great communication tool for people moving into the villages, but also for people who've been living here for years to say, oh, Camp Villages brochure is getting ready to come out. Senior Games brochure is ready to come out. Uh, we got doggy uh, cruises taking place at Lake Sumter Lines uh, last week. We have a Mother's Day or Father's Day uh, specialty cruise. So it's something that we should all take pride in because when you show it off to your neighbors and friends, they go, oh my gosh, what an amazing community with all these activities that are available for people to, to get involved in as part of living here. So um, it's something that our accreditation folks, they're enamored with because so few agencies make that investment in a publication that helps people to get involved. You know, most people find out by word of mouth or my friend tells you about it, or the basketball courts is open, go out there and try to play. Here it's all about engagement 
and it's all about participation. So just for, for clarification, uh, since I am involved with the, heavily involved with the budgeting process, what people see in the budgets for what they consider the recreation news is really the entire communications package. And that includes not just the recreation news, it is a part of it, a substantial part of it, but it's all the advertising, uh, the website cost, the, the internet is not free, the providers actually pay for that content and the users get it for free. Uh, we don't have advertisers on our government websites, so therefore that cost has to be absorbed uh, in our budgets. That being said, we have now in excess of 3,000 clubs and, and groups. In prior versions of the rec news, we always had a description, the meeting mm -hmm. dates, the contact information. Uh, obviously with 3,000 groups, that's, that becomes a very big th task to manage. Uh, the feedback I've received from many residents is, where is that? Can we, can we have that published you know, once a quarter or once every four months so that we know what clubs are out there? So there is a list. It's on our website uh, under Recreation Link. It's a complete club listing, so that is updated and available. Um, as far as the Recreation and Parks publication, each club has an opportunity to submit their club information and it would be put in the newspaper. So, um, but we leave it up to the l resident lifestyle uh, volunteer leaders to decide whether they want to submit their club information, which is in the, in the last uh, couple pages. So you, you as a drone club person could add a little bio about the drone club. So choices are there for you to do that. In addition to that, it's also listed in the center and location that you meet. So I think a lot of it is education and learning navigation. Where, you know, where do I go? Mm -hmm. How do I find it? And I think it's, it's like early on when you get a golf cart and you're driving the multimodal pass <laughs> in the community. You know, it's fun and exciting, you know, navigating your way around the community. But um, once you learn how to do that, learn how to understand and read the rec news, learn and understand how to read uh, the website information that's on there, it starts to become automatic. You, you, then you share that information with your friends and neighbors. Oh, here's where you need to go. And so one of our big campaigns is how to get people connected uh, with the resources that we have available about what club listings are on there. So John, if somebody has a problem at one of the recreation uh, centers or the pools or with a member of your staff, who would they reach out to? Well, we, we run under a, a team dynamics here. We, if, if someone comes into the center and has a, a situation or they need some customer service, um, our, our core values and our culture is, is to address that situation to the best of your ability. Um, of course, there is, and like in any organization, there's you know, support staff, managers, supervisor, administrative team members. We're all here to support our residents, regardless of what that issue or that situation is. But sometimes, as you mentioned, you may come in and you have told one of our um, part-time team members who may have to get with the manager or supervisor in that situation. But we are very um, organized in the flow and communication, and we try to be extremely responsive if somebody does come in with a situation or concern that somebody will respond and get back to them. Um, and it's kind of our expectation. So um, the, to answer your question is, if they're wearing a recreation and park shirt and a name tag, and you have a, a comment or concern or situation, by all means share that with them and it will get to where it needs to go if it needs to get to another person or they'll address that situation right then and there. We're in the customer service business and, and actually we're public servants. So John, 2021 is really ramping up. Yes. COVID's finally leaving us, we hope. Yes. Uh, so what can we expect in the, the coming months and the rest of 2021 from your department? So, Summer um, is, I can't believe is here. June is right around the corner. Um, so in the summer months, we have our summer program in Camp Villages. We have uh, socials and events that will be geared up and geared towards the summertime. Summertime is also our big planning time. So we get geared up for the fall and winter activities, the arts and craft shows, all the different 5Ks, all the larger type events that uh, will be taking place. We'll be integrating that new software in the summertime. ActiveNet will be part of that training because we've got to merge a new software in with this existing software. So we're getting that up and running. So that's kind of behind the scenes. Um, we are working on opening some more additional facilities um, south of 44. Uh, property management has a tremendous amount of uh, properties uh, that they're at the rec centers that they're getting ready to upgrade and, and maintain. 
Um, we're hiring and training folks right now uh, to get geared up for uh, we, we know will be an extremely fun-filled, exciting fall and winter season. And so we're, it's a lot of planning right now going on, a lot of reviewing our accreditation standards and best practices. Uh, a lot of operational issues are in place, um, goal setting for the coming future, finalizing our budget for the coming fiscal year. Uh, you know, um, our budget's uh, roughly around $21 million. So, you know, we, I'm very proud to say we have two great assistant directors for Recreation and Parks, uh, Matt Armstrong and Casey Linton, um, instrumental in working with myself and the rest of the team and, and to continue to push towards greatness in all that we do. So summer um, is a lot of planning and behind the scenes things that are in the works, uh, getting excited about the upcoming fall and winter season. One last question sure. for you. Izel, Izeel, Izel, I can never figure yeah. out how to pronounce the gentleman's name, <laughs> but the Izel Recreation Center and now Homestead Recreation yeah. Center are rapidly under construction. Sure. What can we, what can you share with us that we can expect to see from these new facilities? More great things. Oh, come on, John. You More gotta great help things. us. More great things. I think um, we've, there's been some great information shared in the continuing the dream document that you've seen out right. there. Um, as you know, the developer builds and designs and uh, plans those facilities. So we, we want them to be the partner in sharing uh, a lot of the great uh, upgrades and things that'll be coming coming in there. But what, in all honesty, what you're gonna witness and experience and see is continued greatness in the amenities and the facilities. The ESL uh, regional rec complex, you know, it's gonna have a sports pool, it's gonna have your courts elements, it's gonna have your arts and crafts, it's gonna have some really cool uh, layouts inside the facility. Outside, as you already have seen in the continuing the dream document, it's tied in with the with the shopping and eating and hospitality and commercial area. So um, it's, it's another gem that will continue to complement and enhance our service delivery while affording residents the opportunity to take in some food and beverage and shopping and all that good stuff that, that they love to do. And so it just, that synergy of Azel being with those other areas is, is another pearl for our residents. And so, you know, the walkability, the pathways, the trail systems, you know, the list goes on and on. So to answer your question with Homestead and Azel, you're, you're gonna see more great recreation uh, centers uh, be programmed for our residents' use and enjoyment at, the, at what the level and experience and expertise uh, that they have moved here for. And so that's our ultimate goal is for our residents to have the best of their lives. And so um, as the director, uh, our team is committed to that. I hope you've seen that and Absolutely. others see that out there. But by all means, if you have thoughts or suggestions, we are always willing and open to discuss uh, how we can provide additional recreation activities and programs and services. So exciting times. <laughs> for everyone out there who are watching. And I am so blessed and thrilled to be uh, a part of this community and part of the residents of dreams and helping those come true. And uh, look forward to many, many great things to come ahead. And thank you for the opportunity to speak with you, Don. And thank mm -hmm. you for your public service and commitment to help us become a better district and better organization. Well, thank you, John. I appreciate you coming on the show today. Uh, it's, it's been informative. I hope our, our residents and our viewers have gained some new knowledge and some new insight into uh, the recreation department here in the villages. Uh, it is definitely an incredible facility for an incredible community. Um, again, thank you for being You're on welcome. the show, John. Thank you for the opportunity. And uh, well, thank you everyone for watching the show. Uh, once again, this is 10QV, I'm Don Wiley. We'll have another show coming very soon. Thanks for watching. Until next time, have a good day.